Hello students. In this session, we are going to start with another chapter of science. That is chapter number eight, body movements. Let's see what are the different topics that we are going to study in this chapter. First is introduction. We will see the introduction about the chapter. Then, human body and its movement. How do the human body moves? We will study the different joints that are present in our body, like ball and socket joint, pivotal joint, hinge joint, and the fixed joint. After that, the topic is gait of the animals. We will see the different movements of the animals, like earthworm, snail, cockroach, birds, fish, and at last, we will study how do the snake moves. Now let us begin with this chapter. Observe the different movements in your body. Various different movements take place in our body. Like blinking of eyes. When we blink our eyes, the movement is seen in our eyes. While breathing. Breathing involves two processes. Inhalation and exhalation. When we inhale air, the lungs is filled with the air due to which the belly portion expands and while exhalation the air is expelled out from our body at that time the belly contracts likewise we see many different movements taking place in our body when you are writing in your notebook which part of the body are you moving when we write in our notebook do our whole body gets moved? No. We write with our hands, so movement is seen in the hands. Our neck gets bent. Or when you turn to at your friend, so when we turn, so the movement is seen in our neck region. We have seen some of the examples in which the different parts of the body moves while we remain at the same place. There are some examples in which you move from one place to another. Now, if we have to go from one place to another, what we do? We walk. So, there are some examples of moving like walking, running, skipping, jumping. Now, we as a human, if we have to go from one place to another, we walk. Do all the animals do same thing? Let us see how animals move from one place to place. Now in the table, the animals, the body parts used for moving and how do the animals move is given. We will see the different examples of the animals, which body part they use and how do the animal move. So first one is cow. Cow use legs for moving. And how does the cow move? Cow also walk. Next is humans. We humans use legs. And how does we move? We also walk. Then snake. How do the snake move? Which body part do the snake use? The snake use its whole body for moving. And for moving from one place to another, snake slithers. Then is bird. For moving, birds use wings. And how do the birds move? They fly from one place to another. Then is insect. Some of the insect use legs or the whole body. They either crawl or slither. Then is fish. Fish also use its whole body for moving. And how do the fish move? Fish swims. Now next is straighten your arm and try to bend it downwards. What you have to do? You have to straighten your arm and try to bend it downwards. Are you able to do it? Will it be that easy? No, it will not be that easy. So, we are able to move a few parts of our body easily in various directions 
and some only in one direction. So, some of the parts in our body can be moved easily in the various directions, while some part of our body moves only in one direction. Now, here is an another activity. Let's see what we have to do in this activity. Place a scale lengthwise of on your arm so that the elbow is in the center. We have to take the scale of the length of our arm so that the elbow comes at the center of the scale. Now tie the scale and the arm together. You have to tie that scale with your arm. Now try to bend your elbow. Are you able to do? Will you be able to bend your elbow after tying the scale? No, it will not be easy to bend the elbow after the scale is tied. Now in the table, the body parts are given and the various movements are given. Like the body parts rotate completely, rotate partly or turn, bends, lift or does not move at all. So let's see. Out of the different body parts, neck and the back rotates partly and turn. It bends and even we can lift. Various arm we can rotate completely. While wrist, finger, knee, ankle, toe, head and elbow. We can rotate partly or turn and even we can lift them. We have seen the examples of the few animals in which the animals move from one place to another in different ways. Like some of the animals walk, some run, fly, jump, creep, crawl, slither and swim. Now let us study about the human body and its movement. Here's an activity. Bowl an imaginary ball at an imaginary wicket. How did you move your arm? So, while playing a cricket, if you are bowling, so how did your arm rotate? Did your arm rotate in a circular mo movement? Yes. Now, Second is bend your arm at the elbow and leg at the knee. Will you be able to bend it? Yes, we can bend our arm at the elbow and leg at the knee. Now, bend your arm to touch your shoulder with your fingers. Will you be able to bend your arm and touch your shoulder with the fingers? Yes, it is possible. Now next is straighten your arm. And try to bend it downwards. What you have to do? You have to straighten your arm and try to bend it downwards. Are you able to do it? Will it be that easy? No, it will not be that easy. So, we are able to move a few parts of our body easily in various directions and some only in one direction. So, some of the parts in our body can be moved easily in the various directions, while some part of our body moves only in one direction. Now here is an another activity. Let's see what we have to do in this activity. Place a scale lengthwise of on your arm so that the elbow is in the center. We have to take the scale of the length of our arm so that the elbow comes at the center of the scale. Now, tie the scale and the arm together. You have to tie that scale with your arm. Now, try to bend your elbow. Are you able to do? Will you be able to bend your elbow after tying the scale? No, it will not be easy to bend the elbow after the scale is tied. Now in the table, the body parts are given and the various movements are given. Like, the body parts rotate completely, rotate partly or turn, bends, lift or does not move at all. So let's see. Out of 
the different body parts neck and the back rotates partly and turn it bends and even we can lift various arm we can rotate completely while wrist finger knee ankle toe head and elbow we can rotate partly or turn and even we can lift them we are able to bend or rotate our body in places where two parts of our body seem to be joined together so in our body where two parts of our body are joined together we can bend or rotate that part and these places are called as joints if our body has no joints do you think it would be possible for us to move in any way at all if our body does not have any joints it will not be possible for us to move what exactly is joined together at these joints we said that where the two parts of our body are joined together it is known as joints but what exactly is joined to form a joints press your finger against the top of your head face neck nose ear hands and legs including figure, fingers and toes do you get a feel of something hard pressing against your fingers the hard structures are bones so our body is made up of hard structures known as bones you will find so many bones in our body so when a child is born three not five bones are present in the body but as the child grows the bones are reduced to two not six when it reaches its adulthood as some of the bones get fused with together bones cannot be bent so how do we bend our elbow bones cannot be bent we have seen in the earlier activity that we can bend our elbow let's see how the elbow is bent it is not one long bone from the upper arm to our wrist it is the different bones joined together at the elbow so our elbow is not just a one long bone but the different bones are joined together at the elbow therefore we can bend our elbow similarly there are many bones present in each part of the body our body consists of many bones we can bend or move our body only at those points where the bones meet so only that part of the body can be bent or moved where the bones meet there are different types of joints in our body to help us to carry out different movements and activities so there are different joints present in our body which helps us to carry out the different movements and the activities in our day to day life now let us study the first joint which is present in our body that is ball and socket joint to understand the ball and the socket joint we will perform an activity Let's see how this activity is being carried on. For this activity, roll a strip of a paper into a cylinder. What we have to do is take a paper and roll that paper into a shape of a cylinder. After that, make a small hole in an old rubber or the plastic ball. So what you have to do is take a rubber or a plastic ball and make a small hole in that ball. now push the paper cylinder into the ball the paper cylinder that we have made we have to push that into the hole that we have made in the ball now put the ball in a hole after that we have to put that ball and the paper cylinder into a small bowl and does the ball rotate freely inside the bowl will 
the ball rotate yes now we will connect this activity with the actual bone that is present in our body now imagine the paper cylinder is your arm in the activity which we have in which we have used the paper cylinder imagine that it is the arm and the ball is its end and the ball which we have used is the end of the arm the bowl is like the part of shoulder to which your arm is joined and the bowl which we have used is like the part of the shoulder in which our arm is joined or attached in the image you can see the paper cylinder imagine as the arm the ball is the end of the arm and the bowl which we have used is the part of the shoulder the rounded end of one bone fits into the cavity of the other bone so in this type of the ball and the socket type of the joint the rounded end of the one bone will fit into the cavity of the other bone in the activity we have seen the rounded end we used as the ball which fits into the cavity the hollow space that we have used as a bowl of the another of the other bone such joints allow the movement in all directions so the ball and socket joint will allow the uh, will allow the movement in all the directions this type of the joint is found in the two regions of our body one is the shoulder and another is the hip region so earlier we have seen while bowling the shoulder moves completely rotates completely so such type of joints allow the movement in all direction now let us study the another joint that is pivotal joint pivotal joint is also known as the rotary joint the joint where our neck joins the head is a pivotal joint this joint is found in the neck where our neck joins with the head pivotal joint allows us to bend our head forward and the backward so pivotal joint helps us to bend our head in the forward and the backward direction it also helps to turn the head to our right or left so pivotal joint will help to turn our head to right or left pivotal joint is also found in the wrist region it helps in the movement of the wrist in the upward and the downward direction how are these movements different from those of our arm that can rotate a complete circle in its ball and socket joint so how are how the pivotal joint is different from the ball and socket joint in ball and socket joint we have seen that the movement takes place in all the direction in pivotal joint cylindrical bone rotates in a ring so in pivotal joint a cylindrical bone will rotate in a ring so in this session we have studied about the different movements that take place in our body how do these movements take place in our body we have studied about the joints what are joints and we have studied two types of joints that is ball and socket joint and the pivotal joint and where are these joints located in our body i hope in this session is understood to you we will continue with this chapter in our next session